everyone. My name is Caitlin Leggett with the Waste Notifications and Reporting Group. I'm an, I am an Environmental Scientist Level 3. And today we're going to go over the Annual Hazardous Waste Report for 2020. And we're going to start off with who has to submit, submitting the annual report. We're going to walk through the three ways you can submit through the HW1, the RICRA Subtitle C reporting forms, or electronically through RICRA info. Then we're going to quickly go over some new regulations. We're going to have some contact information for different groups. We have a slide of helpful online resources and a question and answer section. So who has to submit the annual report? A large quantity generator has to submit a annual report. So the definition of a large quantity generator is somebody that generates over 2,200 pounds of hazardous waste, more than two pounds of acute hazardous waste, or more than 220 pounds of any residue or contaminated soil, water, or other debris resulting from the cleanup of a spill into or on any land or water of acute hazardous waste in a calendar month. A facility that treats, stores, disposes, or recycles hazardous waste on site or ships that hazardous waste off site needs to submit an annual report. And then finally, any facility that receives ha hazardous waste from off site generators will need to submit an annual report. An easy way to check to see if you need to submit one is if you currently or were at any point in the reporting year registered as a large quantity generator. So submitting the annual report. The annual report is due by March 1st this year. So you can submit it two ways. The first way we're gonna go over is submitting through the paper forms. So you can use the RICRA subtitle C reporting forms, which is the site identification, the generation and management, the waste received from offsite, and the offsite identification forms. The site identification, which is part of those RICRA subtitle C reporting forms, is interchangeable with our HW1 form. What you need to do is you need to double check for the original signatures in the certification sections of either the HW1 or the site identification form and mail those completed forms to the department. You can use those addresses listed on the screen. We have had some issues with FedEx not accepting our PO box address, so that is why the physical location is listed there. So you can submit electronically using RICRA info. If you choose to submit electronically through RICRA info, you do not have to submit a hard copy of the electronic forms. You just have to keep a copy for your records. So now we're gonna walk through how to use the HW1. So make sure you're using the most recent version of the HW1 because starting the beginning of 2021, we will no longer accept previous versions of the form. And as always, you can find a link to this form at our website. So when to use the HW1, there are multiple reasons you can use the HW1. The first is to obtain an EPID, or you can update any information for your EPID as, an, as a form for the annual report to get a hazardous waste permit, to revise your hazardous waste permit, or to notify that a large quantity generator is closing. So again, if you're gonna use this as the annual report, you must check the corresponding box and input the correct year. If you are a TSD or a large quantity generator, then you also need to check the box below most people that are submitting the annual report are a large quantity generator or a TSD facility. 
If you'll also notice, there's an EPA ID box located at the top of each page. Please list your 12 digit EPA ID number in that box. This will just help keep your report together. So moving on to sections two through seven. In section two, please list your 12 digit EPA ID number. For help, you can find this at EDMS or at RICRA info or ricrapublic.epa.gov. And then please list your agency interest number or AI in that section. In section three, site name, please list the full site name. You can check what the current information that is listed with RICRA or the department at EDMS or ricrapublic.epa.gov you would be amazed how many different names get inputted for the same facility. And the site location, and then section five, you'll notice that there is a box that says same as site location. If the site mailing address is the same as the site location, you can check that box and you do not have to input any information. And then in section seven, for the NAICS code, make sure you're using a six digit NAICS code. And then NAICS.com is a great resource if you are unsure what the correct code is for your facility. Section eight is the site contact person. This is who we will contact with any issues with the form. So make sure that the information is as accurate as possible. Sections nine. So this is the biggest difference between previous versions and this version is now we differentiate between the legal owner of the facility and the legal owner of the property. So legal owner of the facility is who owns the business. Legal owner of the property is who owns the land and the legal operators who runs the business. They can all match, they can all be different. If the legal owner of the property or the legal operator matches the legal owner of the facility, you can check this box and you do not have to input any information. Okay, and then very important is we're looking for the date they became the legal owner or the legal operator. It must be in the month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format. It cannot be just a month and a year, just a year, or just a month and a day. It must be the month, the day, and the year. Okay. So section 10A is the type of regulated waste activity for current activities. This is describing the current status of your facility, not what the facility was doing during the reporting year, but what they are currently doing. If you mark that you are a short-term generator, you must provide details of that in the comment section. If you mark that you are a treater, store, or disposer, you receive hazardous waste from offsite, or you are a recycler, we will check to see if you have the proper permit or approval. So sections 10B is the waste codes. You must have at least one four digit code listed. You can find them in the RICRA subtitle C reporting instructions and forms booklet which can be found at our website in the Louisiana regs in section 33, part five, chapter 49, or I can email you a list upon request. If you would please start in the top left corner, moving to the right. If you need more space, you can use the comment section or attach additional pages. Again, Louisiana does not have state has just waste codes, so you do not have to list anything there. And moving on to section 11A through B is just additional 
regulated waste activities, if you are a transfer facility or a destination facility, we will ask to see if you have the proper permit or approval. And then section 11 C through D, just a continuation of those additional regulated waste activities. If you mark that you're a transfer facility, we will check to see if you have the proper approval. And then we have not adopted pharmaceutical activities in Louisiana at this time, so you can ignore section D. Sections 12 through 15, we have not adopted eligible academic entities with laboratories. You can ignore that. But if you mark that you are an episodic generator or a large quantity consolidation of very small quantity generators hazardous waste, then you will need to complete addendum B and C respectively. You do not have to notify about episodic generation on the annual report. And you do not have to complete section 15 for the report as well. So section 16 through 18, if you mark that you handle hazardous secondary material, then you must complete addendum A. And in the comments, if you mark that you are a transfer facility, you didn't generate any hazardous waste, but you're registered as a large quantity generator, or if you're making any changes to the notification, you will need to input that information in the comment section. Section 19 is a certification. We will need the original wedding signature and the date of signature. The department will not accept any forms that do not have that original wet ink pen and hand to paper signature. And also a certifier must be someone that has authority in the facility. Again, this has to be the original form with the wet ink signature. Moving on to addendum A, if you marked yes in section 16, then you will need to complete this form. You are not required to complete the notification of hazardous secondary material activity this reporting year. But if you decide to, just indicate the reason in section one. And yes, we do know there are two sections ones. We are working to get that fixed, but at the time of the presentation, it was not fixed. So this is what it is. In section two, you input the facility code. Here are some examples of facility codes. You can find those in the RECRA Subtitle C Reporting Instructions and Forms Booklet on pages 101 through 2. And then you enter the waste codes. You're estimated how much you would handle, how much you actually handled, and then the land-based unit. So here are some examples of the land-based units. These can be found in that same booklet on page 103. Moving on to addendum B, episodic generator. You do not have to report this waste in the generation and management form or with the annual report. But if you marked yes in section 13, you will need to complete this form fully. So addendum C is a large quantity generators consolidation of very small quantity generators hazardous waste. If you checked yes in section 14, then you must fill out this addendum. So you'll notice that it says EPA ID number if, assi if assigned. All generators of hazardous waste should and must have an EPA ID number if in Louisiana. You can search a facility's EPA ID number by going to rickrepublic.epa.gov or contacting the department. and just fill it out with the most accurate information that you have. And that is, and then also if you would input the EPID number at the top. And that is the end of the HW1. Now we're gonna move on to the RICRA subtitle C reporting forms. 
You can also find a link to this booklet at our website. And there are a lot of similarities between the site identification form and the HW1, so I'll be going over that form fairly quickly. And this reporting forms booklet has about 123 pages of help. They have the tables of facility codes, hazardous waste codes, source form. So just great resource. Don't worry about the expiration date that is on the title. This form is being extended by a month to month basis until a new form is approved. So site identification form. Sections one through three, make sure you check the box that corresponds with the annual report. You input the correct year. And then you check the box if you are a TSD or a large quantity generator. So, and then in section two, you input your EPA ID number, which should be 12 digits. Again, you can check that at recrepublic.epa.gov, or you can check EDMS or contact the department. If you would not mind putting your agency interest number right next to the EPA ID number, this will help and finding your site information on our end. So, and then the legal name, section three, you can check what is the current information that we have for your facility at recrepublic.epa.gov to make sure it matches, because you would be amazed how many different names get inputted for the same facility. So sections four through seven, the site location address and the site mailing address. If the site mailing address matches the site location address, you can check this box and you do not have to input any information, but it only copies the location address. And then section six, the site line type, just pick the box that best corresponds to your facility. And then section seven, the NAICS code, it must be at like six digits. And NAICS.com is a great resource in finding NAICS numbers. And then at the bottom, you will notice there is a place to put input page numbers. Please input page numbers. So section eight is a site contact information. Again, this will be the person that we contact if there are any issues with the report. So please input the most accurate contact information. And you'll notice that there's an EPID number box at the top of the page. Please input the facility's EPID number up there. This will help keep your report together. And also, if the street address for the contact matches the location address, you can check this box and you will not have to input the address. So section nine is a legal owner and operator of the site. Since this form does not differentiate between legal owner of the facility and legal owner of the property, we are looking for the legal owner of the facility, who owns the business and legal operator is who runs the business. So if the legal owner's address matches the location address, you can check that box and it will copy the location address. You would still need to input the email and the phone number and the name. It will only copy the location address. If the location address does, or the street address does not match the location address, then you need to input that information. And the same for the site legal operator, you can check that box and it will copy only the address. Okay, moving on to section 10A, the regular waste activity, again, this is for your current activities at the facility not what you were during the reporting year. If you mark that you are a short-term generator, then you must provide 
comments of that in the comment section. If you mark that you are a treater, store, or disposer of hazardous waste, you receive hazardous waste from offsite or you recycle, then you, we will check to see if you have the proper permit or approval. So section 10B is a federally regulated hazardous waste code. You must have at least one four digit code listed and you must select the codes that are applicable to your facility. You can find these in the RICRA subtitle C instructions forms and booklet or in the Louisiana regs and I can email them upon request. You start in the top left moving to the right. Louisiana does not have state regulated waste codes, so you do not have to worry about section 10C. So sections 11A through B is additional regulated waste activities. If you mark that you are a transfer facility or a destination facility, we will check to see if you have the proper permitting and approval. Section 11C, if you mark that you are a transfer facility, we will asked to see if you had the proper approval. Section 11 D through 12, we have not adopted pharmaceutical activities or eligible academic entities with laboratories, so you can skip these sections. Section 13 through 15, if you mark yes that you're an episodic generator, then you must complete the episodic generation addendum. And then if you mark that yes, that you are a large quantity generator consolidating a very small quantity generator's hazardous waste, then you must complete that addendum. You do not have to complete section 15 for the annual report. Section 16 through 18, if you mark yes in section 16, you must complete the addendum to the SI form notification of hazardous waste secondary material activity form and then to reiterate in the comment section, if you mark that you are a transfer facility, you didn't generate any hazardous waste, but were registered as a large quantity generator, or you were making any changes, please input that information in section 18. Section 19 is a certification section. Again, we will not accept any form without the original wet ink signature and the date and we only need one signature for the annual report. So moving on to the hazardous secondary material addendum, you only need to complete this addendum if you mark yes to question 16. Again, you are not required to submit this information on the 2020 report. You will need to complete this information on the 2021 report. Again. You mark the reason that best applies to you. And then for two, section two in the description, again, here are some examples of the facility codes that can be found in this booklet on page 101 through two. And then the land-based units can be found on page 103. The episodic generator does not have to complete this form for the annual report, but if you check that you in 13 that you are an episodic generator, then you will need to complete this form. And then the large quantity generators consolidation of very small quantity generators hazardous waste. If you mark yes in section 14, then you must complete this report. Again, it says in EPID number if assigned, all generators of hazardous waste in Louisiana must have an EPID number. You can see that EPA ID number at rickerpublic.epa.gov. And just complete this form with the most accurate information that you have. So now we're gonna go to the generation and management form, which describes the waste that was generated and managed at your facility. So section one, at the top, you'll see that box for your facility's EPID number. In section 1A, just list a short explanation of the waste. It can be the general type, source, type of hazard, or the generic chemical name. And then section 1B, the 
EPA hazardous waste codes are the four digit codes that apply to the waste. You inputted this information on section 10B. So section 1D is the source code. You only are allowed one source code per GM form. The easiest place to find these is in this booklet on page 104 through five. Here are some examples. If you check or use source code G25, the treatment disposal recycling code, then you must input the management method code used. Those can be found on pages 108 through nine. Otherwise, you can leave that section blank. If you use source code G62, you received waste from outside the US, then you must insert the code for the country which sent you the waste. Otherwise, you can leave the country code section blank. In section 1E, the form code, you can only have one form code per GM form. Here, some examples of those. You can find those on page 106 through seven. And then section 1F, the waste minimization code, you can find those on pages 110 through 11. Section G is radioactive mixed. You must mark yes or no. We will not assume if you leave this blank that it is not radioactive mix. Something must be checked, either yes or no. So section 1H is the quantity. And then you must input a unit of measurement code, which is, oh. And here are some examples of the waste minimization codes. And then, but then the unit of measurement codes are one through seven. If you choose gallons, liters, or cubic yards, then you must input the density and the density unit of measurement. And those codes can be found on page 63. So section two through three of the GM form is section two, on-site generation and management of hazardous waste. Was any of the waste that you generated at the facility treated, disposed, or recycled on-site? If yes, mark yes and input the management method code and the quantity. Again, you can find the management method codes on page 108 through 9. And then section 3, off-site shipment. Was any of the waste generated at the facility shipped off-site? If yes, you'll input the EPA ID number of the facility where the waste was shipped, the management method code, used at that facility and how much of the waste was shipped to the facility. Always double check that the EPID number actually exists and is 12 characters because you will need that information for the OI form or the offsite identification form. Okay. And then if the quantity generated, which is noted in section 1H, does not match the quantity treated in section two or the quantity shipped off in section three. Please explain that in the comment section. And here are some examples of the management method codes. Again, those can be found on page 108 through nine of this form. And just to reiterate, if the amount generated does not match the amount treated or the amount shipped offsite, then please just explain that discrepancy in this section. And then you will notice that there are page numbers or places for page numbers at the bottom. The page numbers for the annual report restart for the GM forms. So if you had three GM forms, then mark your pages one of three, two of three, and three of three. Moving on to the waste received from offsite, the WR form. In this form, you're going to describe the waste that your facility received from offsite facilities. Again, you'll notice the EPID number at the top 
Please list your facility's 12-digit EPA ID number. This will help keep your form all together. So section 1A, a short description of the waste. Section 1B, the federal hazardous waste codes. We do not have state regulated hazardous waste codes. You can skip section 1C. In section 1D, you're gonna list the EPA ID number for the facility that shipped you the waste. Again, check recropublic.epa.gov to make sure that the EPA ID number that you are listing is a valid EPA ID number. So section 1E is a form code. You can find those on pages 108. 106 through 7, 1F is a management codes. You can find those on pages 108 through 9. Section G is the quantity. And then you can find the unit of measurement codes on page 63. If you choose that you are gallons, liters, or cubic yards, then you must complete the density and choose the density unit of measurement. And there are also three page three sections for waste on one WR form. And then you have section four if you need to list any comments. And then you'll also notice that there are page numbers. These page numbers restart for the WR form. So if you had three WR forms, then your pages should be one of three, two of three, and three of three. The offsite identification or the OI form is where you're gonna list the sites that transported your waste, the sites that received the waste, and if applicable, the facilities that shipped waste to you. So all, your manifest should have all of this information, but you can always check that information at recrepublic.epa.gov. And most importantly, make sure you put your facility's 12 digit EPA ID number at the top, and in section C, make sure that you are marking the, marking the correct handler type. And if you have any comments, you can list them in section four. As with the GM and the WR forms, the page numbers do restart for the OI form. So if you needed three forms, your pages should be one of three, two of three, and three of three. Now we're gonna go over how to use RICRA info if the facility decides to submit electronically. So now we're gonna register as an industry user. Every facility must have at least one industry user. So we're gonna create a new account. You input your information, click next, and then you're going to input your user ID, a password, and then select an questions and answers. You are going to need these questions and answers if you ever need to request for your user ID or your password. A neat thing is if you already are registered in CDX, you can use that login information for RICRA info. Continuing on as registering as an industry user, you're going to input your, the organization's information, your job title, and contact information. Then we're going to send a verification code via email. And once you verify via email, you should have this pop up on your screen. And then now you can connect to a facility and start requesting permissions for that facility. So connecting. You are going to select, click on select existing site. You do not click on request new site ID. Request new site ID is if you are requesting a new EPID number, which Louisiana has not opted in to use RICR info for that you must click select existing site. And once you click on select existing site, you can search two ways. You can search by the EPID number, which is recommended, or if you don't know the EPID number, 
you can search by the site name and address. Once you find your facility, you're gonna mark, select, and then request access. And then requesting permissions. You can choose four things. You can be a site manager, which has permissions of none or active. The site manager has the ability to view, to edit, and to sign and submit. They also have the ability to approve third parties' permissions. So if you have a consultant that you want them to prepare your annual report, they can send you an electronic signature agreement and you can accept them. You do not have to go through the department for that. And then the annual report, you can be a viewer, preparer, or certifier. Since Louisiana requires reports every year, you will need to be approved for the annual report and the biannual report. So when you are requesting permissions, I would go ahead and request for both of those reports. So the viewer can only look at the report, the preparer can edit the data in the report and the certifier can sign and submit and edit the data if needed. The certifier again must be someone that has authority in the company and every facility must either have one certifier or one site manager in order to sign and submit the report. Once you choose your permission level, you're going to send request. And once you send requests, you'll take them back to your My Sites and you'll notice in permission status row, or column that is now pending. You will receive an email when the permissions have either been accepted or denied. So once you have been accepted, your permissions have been accepted, and you log in, you're gonna to ask to do an electronic signature agreement and identity proofing. So the electronic signature agreement, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna answer five questions and those will, you will be asked to answer those questions when you go to sign your report. Again, this will only pop up if you've been approved as a site manager or a certifier. And so identity proofing, you can perform this electronically, which is recommended because it is a lot faster. It is the quickest way. But if you opt to do paper, you will need to print this form and mail the original wet ink signature to the department. Again, you must mail the original wet ink signature of this form to the department. And then if you are approved to be a site manager, you can opt in to electronic signature agreement management, and this will allow you to approve third parties to be viewers, preparers, or certifiers of your facility. If you choose to opt in, if you don't, that's fine. But if you do choose to opt in, it will pre-populate the mailing address where those third parties can send their electronic signature agreements to. You'll confirm that you've read the rules and you'll save and continue. So now we're going to actually go in to completing the report. You've signed in, you've been approved, you're active. You'll notice that under my sites that the site name is in blue and that your permission status is now active. So your site name, if it is blue, is turns into a hyperlink, which means you can view and work on the report. So you're gonna click on the site name and it will bring you to the home page. 
for this picture, we asked to be the site managers of this facility. So we have access to the biennial report, the annual report, and the e-manifest. And you'll also notice that a lot of the information you see is pre-populated, which is a really fun thing about Recruit Info. But to work on the annual report, you'll click on the annual report tab, which will bring you to this page. Then we're going to create new submission, select the year 2020. You can upload a flat file to input your annual report data. We are just going to continue to manually input the data. So continue to data entry. You can also bring forward data from previous submissions. We are not going to do that in this presentation. So we are not going to bring forward any GM data. And now we're going to work on the GM form. You're going to select Add New GM Form. You'll notice that your facility's general information is listed in the top. In Section 1, you're going to describe your waste. Section B, you're going to input the hazardous waste code. Just mark all that apply to this waste. And then you're going to input one source code, one form code, a waste minimization code. And you'll notice that section G, radioactive mix, is pre populated to say no. If it was, this waste was mixed with radioactive waste, then you must mark yes. You'll input the quantity generated, select the unit of measurement. If you select gallons, liters, or cubic yards, it will bring up where you have to input the density and select the density unit of measurement. Section two, did any of the waste generated at this facility, was it treated, stored, or recycled on site? If it was, click this box, which will bring up, and then you're going to click on Add On-Site Process Systems. You're going to select the management method code used, and then input the quantity managed. You'll notice that gallons is in parentheses because that is what I chose in section one as a unit of measurement for this waste. Once you save changes, it will bring that waste under section two. In section three, you'll input if any of the waste you generated on site was shipped off site for treatment, disposal, or recycling. If it was, click yes, and you're going to add the off site facility. You can search by EPA ID number. You can start typing and it will start to populate all of the TSD facilities that are registered. And once you select the correct facility, you'll select the management method code and input the quantity shipped. The unit of measurement is already pre-selected to what you inputted in section one and then you save changes and if the quantity generated does not match the quantity shipped off-site or handled on-site please just describe that discrepancy in the comment section once everything is done you can save and it will bring you back to the main page and you'll notice that now that waste is under the GM form. If you need to edit, print, or you need to delete this page, you can use the action buttons under the action column. You can repeat these steps as many times as needed. And you'll also notice that under the OI form, a facility that, we that received our waste we generated is now under the OI form. 
So now going to the WR form, we're going to add new WR form. We're going to describe the waste in section A, choose the hazardous waste codes, and then enter the EPID number of the facility that shipped the waste to you. You can search it or you can just input the information. Again, you can search by their EPID number, which is recommended, or you can search by their name and address. Once you click search, it will populate all of the pertinent facilities. And once you make your choice, you'll see it come up under section D. So continuing on with the WR form, you'll input the form code, the management code, and the quantity you received from that facility. Again, if you marked that the unit of measurement is gallons, liters, or cubic yards, it will ask you for the density and the density unit of measurement. And once you save, it will bring you back to this main page and you'll see that is this waste is now under the WR form. If you need to print, edit, or delete this page, you can do so using these buttons in the action column. And you'll see that in the WR form, or the OI form, I'm sorry, that generator is now listed. Inputting an OI form. In this main page, you'll click Add New OI Form. And you'll input all the pertinent information. Just make sure in Section C that you choose the correct activity. And once you save, it will bring you back and you'll see that it is now listed under the OI form you should only have to manually input the transporters since the receiving facilities of your waste and the facilities that shipped waste to you should be pulled from the GM and WR forms. If you need to print, edit, or delete any of these OI forms, you can do so using the buttons under the action column. Completing the SI form, is that same main page, you'll see site ID form. We're going to add site ID form, which will bring you to this page. The best thing about Ricker Info is that the SI form is already pre-populated with all the information of the facility. You just have to make sure that the information is correct and up to date. You can choose the site land type, just pick the one that best describes your facility. You can add an NAICS code. You can actually search using RICRA info. And then for legal owner and legal operator, you can add or delete, but we're going to go through adding, or you can edit the current ones using these buttons. But we are going to go through adding a legal owner. You can input their information or if they are similar to what is already in the operators, you can actually copy from, you can copy the address from the site location, the mailing or the contacts address, or you can copy one of the operators. Once you input that, you'll save changes and it will now show up under those sections. Yeah. This is the information that should reflect the current status of your facility. It should not reflect the facility during the reporting year. If you mark that you are a short-term generator, it will pop up a box that you will need to input a description of why you are a short-term generator.
section 11, make sure this information is correct and up to date. We do not opt in to eligible academic entities or laboratories, so nothing should be marked in there. It should say none selected. Just mark what is pertinent to your facility. If you are a large quantity generator, notifying of consolidating very small quantity generators hazardous waste, you must mark yes. If you do, you'll need to add. Click on add and it will pop up this box. You'll need to input the EPID number of the very small quantity generators, which because in Louisiana, all generators must have an EPID number and input the information with the most current up-to-date contact information. Once you click save, it will populate there for you. You can edit or delete that row using those action buttons to the side. If you need to notify of hazardous secondary material activity, you can mark this button. Again, you do not have to report hazardous secondary material activity on the 2020 report. If you do want to notify, if you check yes, are you notifying under that you'll begin managing, are managing, or stop managing, you'll need to mark either yes or no. If you mark yes, you must select a notification reason and then describe the waste. And once you click that you are notifying for this reason, it will ask you for the effective date of the notification. And then you'll need to add under the description of hazardous secondary material. You'll input the facility code the hazardous waste code, and the estimated short tons, and then the land-based unit. You'll save changes and it will show up under section two. So now that you are done double checking or completing some of the components of the site ID form, you'll need to review the form. And if you are a certifier or site manager, you can save, or you can save if you're prepared as well. But now we're going to sign and submit the form. So this is that main page that had the GM, the WR and the OI form. I just had room to show you the site ID form where it says sign and submit. You will only have that button if you are accepted as a certifier or a site manager. You'll click sign and submit. You'll certify that this information is true to the best of your knowledge. You'll input your login information, login. You'll answer one of those verification questions. And then you can now sign your annual report. Once you click sign, it will bring you all the way back to the main page of your facility under the annual report tab. And you'll notice under in progress, your annual report now under st the status column says submitted. If you click on submitted, it will pop up the last day it was updated, who it was updated by, and their contact information. You will also receive an email that says that your report has successfully been submitted for review. You can also print or view this report under the action column using those buttons, but you can no longer edit. 
So now we're going to go over a very brief explanation of some of the new hazardous waste regulations. Some of the biggest changes or updates were episodic generation for very small quantity generators or small quantity generators. Small quantity generators now have to re-notify the large quantity generator consolidation of very small quantity generator waste new regulations for recyclers, and a new method for large quantity generation closures. So episodic generation allows very small quantity generators and small quantity generators to generate above their category without having to register to a higher one. There are two types of episodic generation events, a planned and unplanned. As the name suggests, a planned event is prepared for while the unplanned event was unexpected. Since small quantity generators and very small quantity generators do not register as large quantity generators, they do not have to submit an annual report. Small quantity re-notification. Before small quantity generators did not have to re-notify the department like large quantity generators. But starting in 2021 and every four years, small quantity generators must re-notify using the notification of hazardous waste activity or the HW1. If your EPID number ends in an even number, you must submit your re-notification by April 15th. If your EPID number ends in an odd number, you must submit the re-notification by September 1st. So large quantity generator consolidation of very small quantity generators waste. A large quantity generator may accumulate hazardous waste from a very small quantity generator controlled by the same person. Control in this instance means having the power to direct policies while the person is any entity. You must inform the department within 30 days before receiving the first shipment, and it must be noted on the annual report. So large quantity generator closures. In the past, large quantity generators could close their EPID using the certification of no hazardous waste. From now, they must use the HW1 and complete section 15. So recyclable materials. Recyclers that do not store before recycling now have to note that on their annual report. So just some helpful contact information. So the Waste Notification and Reporting Group, you can contact me, Caitlin Leggett. I am the Environmental Scientist Level 3. You can contact my direct supervisor, Michelle Grimmer, or you can contact the manager, Ms. Tanya Landry. You can also contact the surveillance regional offices if you have questions regarding how to classify your waste, what source code should be listed on the generation and management form, the more specific questions that we in the waste notifications and reporting group cannot answer, you can go to your surveillance regional office and they can better help you. So the surveillance regional offices are broken up into six regions and they're by parishes. You can go to the DQ website under the directory and you can find this map. You can also find the contact information for, for, for each regional office. The Small Business Assistance Program is a great resource. They help small businesses and people traverse the confusing world of regulations and permits. So if you are a small, classified as a small business, you have less than 100 employees, you're independently owned, you're not dominant in the field, 
you're not a major facility and you're not a publicly traded company, they will be happy to help you. They do have different regions from, from surveillance. So I would go to the DEQ website in the small assistance program page and you can find the information for your region. So here are a few helpful online resources that I found. You can always go to our website, which has links to the HW1 form, the RICRA C subtitle instructions and forms booklet, our, the regulations and frequently asked questions. You can go to the DQ website, which is the regional offices, which is just a quick link to find which surveillance region you are in. The third URL is a link to the Small Business Assistance Program. The fourth one is to EDMS, which if you know the agency interest number, you can review past submissions of your annual report for that facility. The fifth is for NAICS.com, which will help you if you have any trouble looking for NAICS codes. The sixth URL is to ricrapublic.epa.gov. This will help you if you need to review past submissions or you need to look up EPA IDs. The seventh URL is just the main page of ricrapublic.epa.gov where you can find federal regulations and helpful information, helpful information. The final URL is the URL if you want to submit the annual report electronically. You can also find that URL at our website as well. Any questions? We will post all the questions that we received during the presentation on our website. Thank you so much for attending. I hope this was helpful.